Are we live now? We are live. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, we will talk about the future of travel industry that had a hard hit by COVID. And we will talk about the post-COVID recovery, when it will happen, what it will look like, how it will evolve in the future, how digital technologies will shape post-COVID travel. So with me, uh, I have uh, uh, Claire, Claire, uh, Claire Shen. Claire Shen is a managing partner of iSource Consulting Group. It's a boutique advisory and investment management consulting company with projects in sustainability, in commercial and real estate development, etc., etc., etc. Claire, she's a woman of the world, travels and works in USA, Taipei, Amsterdam, Munich, Oakland, with 90% of the business of the company uh, done in USA and in Europe. We have also Antonio Cantala Piedra. Antonio is uh, Spanish, based in Madrid. He's the founder and CEO of Universe. Universe is a software company that considers itself an alternative to bureaucracy based on biometric technologies and cashbacks specifically focused on tax-free. We also have Andrew Bates, CEO of Safely, based in Atlanta, USA. It's a simple concept, and we were talking just before that I love this idea and how, how unfortunate I am not having it myself. It's a simple concept to help homeowners to feel safe and comfortable when they rent their, their houses. Uh, that safely does a back check on 200 global, global fraud and crime database. It works in partnerships with Airbnb, HomeAway, and so many other platforms. So tourism, we all know that suffers. Good morning to you all, of course. Uh, as we know, tourism Good morning. probably is the most, the, the most, uh, um, with the most severe impact on this world in this pandemic. Portugal, by example, was growing for the past nine years, uh, growing hugely, 7.2% in room nights year after year. In 2019, it was an all-time record in terms of tourism, and we had 70 million billion room nights an annual increase in revenue of 10.3%. And now we are back in 1994. We go back 27 years. And you can imagine the impact of this in unemployment, bankruptcy, the industry of events, for, for example, it's, it went to scratch. And in the world, it's not different. 2020 was the worst year ever. Arrivals decreased 74%. International arrivals decreased 1 billion passengers. Europe is struggling to implement the green certificate and they need urgently to coordinate everything with huge markets as Brazil, United States, China, and so on. And a recent st study that uh, we have done here in Cascais shows that the future of traveling uh, will be, will be, uh, and the tourism, the tourists will look for destinies that have a lot of history. Probably they will look for beach destinations, nature destinations. 34% they want to get out of their routine, just to get out of this Zoom and Teams technologies. 60% of them, they believe they will travel still in 2021. 60% believes they will travel as much, at least as much as before COVID. And 50% they believe they will increase their average stay so in, in future traveling. 56% percent they 
want and they need, otherwise they will not travel, flexibility on cancellations. So I will start uh, a round of questions and I will start with Claire. Sorry, guys, but I have to start with the lady. I will start with, with Claire. Claire, you're a woman of the world. Please give us your overall idea of future traveling and this fascinating on discovering space travel and your experience, uh, your experience uh, researching this area, studying this area. What will the future look like? And tell us about this fascinating new world of future traveling. Well, um, yeah, my name is Claire, and uh, personally, I love travel, and travel really is a fascinating. Think about the experience. We, the experience uh, is priceless. So um, I love the, the future of travel, Tabi, and uh, because I am uh, also an uh, idealist and futuristic. I find it quite fascinating and how human and go through the latest technology and science and space of the new, uh, it's, it's a new revolutionary on our uh, future um, of the travel, just like the, you know, kind of fashion trend or technology trend. We are really and very lucky uh, living in this modern century and thanks to, uh, to all the latest technology that we can travel around the world on Earth, and more importantly, there is a possibility, uh, mostly like, likely, uh, you might get to travel to the moon or the Mars, even stay in the space travel, uh, space hotel uh, around the orbits, uh, orbits in uh, a lot of lifetime. And as long as, you, of course, uh, as long as it, you know, just, it's no more a, a, a dream anymore, um, you know, so no longer a dream. So. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is, uh, you know, most techie this day, the all agree. Uh, so after the COVID, we, we have fascinating think about there are, if, if we can travel like a Star Wars or a Harry Potter's movie, like, you know, teletransfer or, or you know, just like a, a using the technology. So I will just cover the new, uh, what's the digital uh, technology trend related to the travel laid down. So. Perfect. Yeah. So we, we just uh, we we just have um, Sushil Sushil uh, Shodhari with us. Uh, welcome. <clears throat> I already did the presentation of of the, of the rest of the panel. So Sushil is the founder and CEO of Travelax, based in USA. So Sushil is a serial tech entrepreneur. I love this when I was doing your research. Uh, <laughs> defines Travelax as a Netflix-like shopping. And I also find this absolutely amazing. So and Travelax is a shopping assistant, online and local shopping, easy order and delivery based on personal marketing, works directly with airports, airlines, and duty freeze and sushi uh, sushil i will get back to you in a few minutes welcome so andrew uh going straight to your business and uh trying to learn a little bit more residential tourism had some kind of benefits especially in portugal and we had that um some kind of benefit in comparison to hotels in early stage of this pandemic in portugal people was looking were looking mainly for residential uh, tourism and i believe it was a little bit uh, like this uh, worldwide so what kind of prediction do you have for post pandemic and do you believe that airports hotels airlines will benefit on a service uh, similar to safely and uh, as i said before I am the one that is jealous not to have this idea. <laughs> I, amazing. Andrew, your view on this, please. Yeah, there's a whole lot to do to make um, trust and safety uh, between you know, people, between companies, to make that a lot more seamless. And so there's, there's work for everyone to do here. Uh, you know, we're seeing a few trends. One is, um, I mean, certainly in the last year, the thought of going into a hotel and uh, standing in the lobby, going to that breakfast buffet with everyone else is just weird 
And, uh, and so, so naturally people are choosing to stay in a private home versus, uh, versus a hotel. W- what that did though, and it's really interesting is at least in the United States, something like 25% of travelers tried a private home for the first time. So, uh, in Europe, there's a lot of like staying in a, staying in a, a shared accommodation, a private home, you know, a non hotel is pretty common. It, it's, it's just when you think of traveling, you think of accommodation, you think, you, I'm gonna, I might see in a home, I might see in a hotel. The United States hasn't been like that. It still is a, still is a, a growing market. So I think just a lot more awareness. People are staying for the first time. I think that trend towards staying in, in private homes is going to, uh, just increase because once people have done it, it was a good stay in general. Uh, they're going to keep doing it. Uh, the other trend that is going to continue is, is finding ways to feel comfortable about your safety. Uh, whether, like you said, uh, whether it's an airport, whether it's uh, on an air, airplane, whether it's in a hotel, on a cruise ship. And, and there are like what we found as we're talking to property managers, people managing homes is they think about risk differently. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been in business for 30 years and they're like, I know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't need a solution. Whether our solution matches COVID or, or other risks, they're like, we're good. Like I, I have a handle on my business. I know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden they're like, Oh, something happened. And, and we weren't prepared for this. Now my mind's a little bit more open and I'm going to think a little bit more broadly about what is risk? What does risk mean to my business? What does risk mean to my customers, my guests, my travelers? And, and all of a sudden now they're, now they're looking for solutions and they're more open. I mean, we do one to make sure you have a good guest in your house, but, but part of that as we get to the airline uh, concept is, well, there's not really a front desk in a, in a home. So when people get in, they get a lot code, they're able to enter, enter the, the, the house automatically. Well, now that's a trend that's happening in at the airlines. You don't want as much person to person contact. So how do we know the right person is taking that airplane seat or that you get access to your hotel room without talking to someone at the front desk? And so that's just one trend where is you, it had to work for private homes, but it's going to extend uh, to the whole rest of I mean, the rest of our economy. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I strongly, I strongly believe that. And I believe that you guys in this panel, you, you have to talk to one another because there are a lot of connections in, in, in this panel that could be made in the future. And, um, I'm, I'm a board member of, uh, of, uh, Invest Cascais. So I'm always thinking on connecting people. And, uh, we should be in Cascais at this moment on this Oasis event. We will for sure in 2022. And, um, what I would do if we were in Cascais, not virtually, it, it would, it would be something like this. Guys, let's have a coffee after this. We all need to talk together. So, uh, Sushil, um, uh, a, a question. A question to you. Uh, we we were all avoiding uh, personal contact, and uh, online had a exponential growth, huge exponential growth during this pandemic. And on the other hand, traditional shopping is investing a lot in the experience. So you guys are working on a on a, a day to day basis to increase the experience of the online shopping and the online solutions for shopping. On the other hand, traditional industry is investing a lot on the experience. So will the will the evolution of IT change shopping forever? Will COVID benefit IT business shopping uh, like yours uh, in the future? I know the pandemic totally destroyed whatever business model that uh, your company or similar companies had. But how will this work in the future? How, how will be the combination combination between traditional markets and uh, online online businesses like yours? Uh, will will uh, your company work with traditional shops in the airport? And you have a guy. We're taking things to the airplane. Tell us a little bit about this interesting business that you are running. Sure. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. Great to meet all the panelists. Uh, <clears throat> I think one way to think is nowadays, I don't know if you've seen, but if you see in a movie on Netflix where people are sort of shaking hands and hugging each other, you s- s- suddenly feel that there was something off there. That there was something awkward there. Like how come they are hugging? Because in our day-to-day life, 
we are not doing that and we are not seeing that at least in person so suddenly when we see that on a screen even on the screen it feels awkward to us and imagine so this pandemic is not something which is going on for a few months it is going on for about you know one and a half years now and possibly for another let's say you know for another few months at least uh, what it has done is it has brought in a a, a few things a lot of uh, consumer base which was not used to doing digital or online transactions it has forced them to try the online channel right? whether it is for groceries whether it is for entertainment whether it is for education uh, whether it is for other you know whole bunch of other things like events like these right we would never in our uh, probably practical lives would think of doing harasses on on a video call like this right uh, but i think that that's that's how you know uh, and and i think there is a lot of research and expert opinion that uh, some of these changes are here to stay they are here to stay because the customer gets used to it uh, the customer also for some amount of time through this sec third wave or fourth wave will still be hesitant to try something in a physical way so if we talk about travel ex where even pre covid we were all about creating a premium airport concierge for you so if you are a, a premium card member with visa mastercard you are a loyalty member of a premium uh, premium member like first class member of an airline basically what we till you reach the airline there is still about you are spending about a couple of hours at the airport how do we make that experience a premium experience whether it is duty free shopping whether it is getting a personal shopper while you are at the airport looking at the stores uh whether you can book a fast track security a meet and greet for you your family your friends where you are greeted right off the plane and escorted all the way out to to your cab or your car and that through the security in a fast way uh so we were all about travelex is all about creating that premium concierge uh, experience and a premium experience at the airport with covid and its primary uh uh impact on for the airlines and airport was revenue we could enhance the airport or the airline revenue by close to about 15% in less than 2 years uh with with no changes on their current supply chain or their current uh, you know capex opex models uh, with covid uh you know the the shift has gone from revenue to even operations management where as a passenger i'm now standing outside the store the duty free store looking at travelex and ordering and telling someone to have it ready where i can just go and do an express pick up i don't have to hand over my boarding pass i don't have to hard hand over my credit card i don't have to hand my my passport because it's not because of the premiumness now because i am care i firstly i don't want to travel and if i travel uh, the last thing i want is getting in touch with you know handing over my card and getting in touch with four or five people in close proximity physical proximity so i think the shift we are seeing is is going to stay here is going to transform business models which we are seeing education is is usually impacted you've heard of that stat where the average duration of a booking at airbnb has gone from 2 days to 28 days mm-hmm. across the world people are booking airbnb and vacation rentals and and homes mm-hmm. for 28 days on an average now right? mm-hmm. so they are not comfortable going and staying at a hilton not comfortable <laughs> going and staying at a higher uh so some of these things as as you correctly pointed out that once you have experienced those will you go back uh and if uh if there were 100 passengers before uh, i'm sure at least 20 of them will still retain the old habit if not i would not say majority will you know will retain the new habit but even if it's 20 out of 100 who are adopting this new digital channel that's a wide shift uh, this has accelerated the digital adoption which probably was on the road map for 5 years has been now compressed into you know uh, into one and a half years uh, we are seeing this the on travelex we take orders for food and beverage duty free lounge booking uh, our average penetration was half percent like half percent of all a- airport passengers were using our services that number is now at 4% wow. we are not at 96% we still have the remaining 96% we have but we have gone from half percent of the total airport passengers to 4% that's a 800% jump which you know we would dream as founders but it is it is come through through this pandemic uh, so i think we 
I think the shift is here to stay. I'm not saying the shift in the volume is here to stay. A lot of people will go back to their old ways. But despite that, whatever is a residual change in habit, that is also going to have a huge impact on, on everyone in the ecosystem. What that leads to is airports, airlines, uh, the retail shops uh, at the airport, at the malls have to now, they cannot think of digital as an afterthought. They have to think digital as a first class citizen. They have to think of ways of providing services and uh, their products through digital channels as uh, as as a good 20-30% of their audience are going to do that, uh, continue to do that even post-pandemic uh, as we are seeing it. There are multiple research reports to say that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, 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 I totally agree with you and, uh, and I believe there's no turning back and uh, we will use more and more technology in, uh, in future traveling. Uh, in, in our future life, we were forced to do it and you, and you mentioned with schools and so on. Uh, we are talking today about digital nomads and so on. Um, and early March, uh, when we we postponed uh, ORAS's global conference in Kashgar for 2020, for 2020, it was a last minute cancellation. I believe probably it was the first international event canceled in the world. It was the ORAS's because it was oh. right on, uh, on uh, March the, the, the 12 or 13, something like that. Um, and I had a kid that, uh, that connected with me uh, from Georgetown University. And he said, hey, Georgetown is closing, and I would like to explore Portugal. Uh, what do you think? And I said, that's perfect. Come to my place. You can stay here for uh, whenever you want. And I'm... Um, <laughs> Business models like uh, Andrew with residential tourism, like yourself, as you said, home, home rentals increased and so on. It's a, it's a new reality. So I will go to Antonio now. Antonio, uh, you have a, an amazing phrase uh, that I will say in Spanish. I, I, I left you for, for last but not the least because, ge because geographically sp speaking, you are closer to me. You are 600 kilometers away only. So I gave the opportunity to the rest of the world first because you are a neighbor al almost. You said a, you, you say an amazing phrase in Spanish that is burocracia me enferma. And this means uh, bureaucracy borrows bor uh, bor bor me. Uh, makes you bored, and uh, and and I believe this phrase is absolutely amazing because we all hate bureaucracy, and you created a business model around it. So, uh, Antonio, how will biometric uh, technologies evolve in the post-COVID, and was COVID beneficial to biometric tech and uh, your company in terms of? governmental agreements, etc., because this is an, an area that, that needs a lot of articulation with governments and companies and other companies and so on. So was this beneficial in terms of connections and agreements? I know in terms of business, of course not. And another question, uh, personal data protection is one of the topics in the world. And How will this impact business, uh, your business uh, in the future? And how do you believe this will impact tourism uh, in the future as well? Uh, so give us your thoughts and ideas, Antonio, and welcome again. Okay, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. I think, I think the future of travel um, um, should be uh, technological first. Um, so you see massively... Uh, mature or, or, or less mature uh, technologies um, and should be mathematical um, because I think uh, this is going to provoke, uh, uh, you know, more efficient and cheaper markets uh, using, uh, you know, machine inferring, machine predicting, um, machine um, um, responses uh, using algorithms. Um, also, the future of travel uh, should be um, um, prophylactic, and, 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 and we're going to get that uh, using uh, technologies, using cloud-based uh, technologies and, and, and mobile phones and uh, smartphones, uh, and, and less hardware, because uh, whenever we're using cloud-based technologies, we're making everything prophylactic 
and we're going to avoid viruses and, and, and new pandemics. And also we'll be uh, putting at the center of all stages of the value chain, the client, because uh, till, till uh, you know, before the pandemic, you know, many, many people was underserved and we need to use technology to really uh, overserve, uh, you know, the, the users, the clients. And uh, regarding this case, you know, the, the, the global shoppers and the tourist people. Um, yeah, um, bureaucracy is, is, uh, is murderous. And it seems out many times when we talk with governments that nobody wants to stop the deaths. You know, uh, bureaucracy is, is generating uh, uh, millions, billions of, of losses. So regarding to, you know, the, you know, Booniverse, Booniverse is, is, is not just a Spanish software company. We are in, in, uh, mostly in, in the majority of the European countries, Portugal for sure. And, and nowadays, regarding to the cashbacks, uh, industry and, and the tax free and the ability refund, uh, Europe uh, has a problem because uh, it's losing billions of money because they are still using old-fashioned uh, technologies, analogic technologies, you know, coming from from uh, from, from the income beds. They're 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 paper based. They are they are using uh, a lot of physical uh, touch, etc. So I think hopefully because of the pandemic, and it's, uh, I regret this, but it's, I think, one of the, the few things pandemic is, is, positive things pandemic is going to generate. Um, you know, the, the new uh, digital nomads and the new travelers are going to be more demanding, and they're not going to tolerate from governments and from retailers uh, the usage of analogic and old-fashioned solutions. So that's why I think it's going to be good for biometric software. Uh, all the technologies, uh, mature or less mature technologies, that put at the center of the value chain the, the, the client and, and, and make, uh, you know, the, the connectivity and the transactions safer. So I think it's, we are in a turning point. Many things are going to change progressively. And I think uh, this is the, the momentum for many companies, technological companies, startups, scale-ups, to really move forward with this and finally defeat uh, uh, bureaucracy because it's, it's, it's causing deaths, uh, as, as mentioned before. So that's that's also the, the you know the lay motive and the, the mission statement of, of of Booniverse to change this and to to really generate uh, because in the end, if you use this kind of technologies. You're, you're attracting high value uh, global shoppers and tourist people that are going to increase finally the GDP, increase sales, you know, boosting sales uh, dramatically and, and generating also qualified jobs. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I agree. I agree. It's a great vision. Uh, so uh, um, this is a, a question uh, for, for everybody trying to connect um, most mm -hmm. of of your business. Will the future be something like biometric device? I don't know which one. Will, um, will spot me when I'm entering the airport with no ticket, with nothing, and I just entered the airport and he knows that I have the passport and connects with the airline. And uh, I go shopping, I'll go shopping and um, Sushil has the technology of biometrics for sure. So it will have uh, Antonio's technology and uh, it will recognize and it will go direct to my, <clears throat> to my credit card and delivers me my goods in the airplane. And then um, I go to a house that is, that is rented by Andrew and uh, the house also by Biometric when I arrive to my destination will recognize me and do immediate uh, debits on my credit cards and, and so on. Will the world of tourism be like this in the future? I don't know who wants to speak first, but um, just crossing ideas. Yes, may I? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, about two months ago, uh, this one of startup actually is Visa back a startup called Miru announced and this acquisition the deep dippers. So what I do this into this uh, travel payments 
and they start out back by this visa, then uh, what I do is they gain uh, business to business travel uh, payment technology. And uh, they have this uh, um, decentralized that where you see that, you know, what what the point is? What I say is, uh, uh, look at um, this. Uh, uh, if you can, and, and, and the companies that are all embracing the decentralized workforce. We mean, uh, we mean more uh, global payment and need and come by. Just like look at it, Coinbase and the large employee, and um, they are saying all remove and they work on travel. So uh, they the, the travel with the digital. Uh, technology, that's the for sure. So that come out of technology, they will see whatever you go and you just send your, so. Antonio, do you want to comment? You're based on uh, biometric technologies and I believe this, this, this cash back and uh, bureaucracy and so on. And I believe that this integration on every other industry could be very beneficial. So technology and mathematics are not the problem. I think uh, the, I think it's going to happen if we only um, uh, take into consideration, uh, you know, these uh, uh, parameters. The thing is, how are we going to preserve, you know, the the, the data and the privacy, etc. Because uh, every every moves within the internet. Uh, not, not only talking about biometrics. Oh, every move it, it's a, it's a coordinate and, and it means uh, data and useful data many times. But it it, it uh, links uh, this with privacy and and also it has to do with with the system. Also, our, our, our current system is preserving uh, you know properties like houses. Well, uh, you know uh, now we're having many problems with with the. Uh, with uh, you know, with this, but uh, it, it's at some point successful because it's preserving the property of, of you know cars or, or houses. So you need to preserve the property of data of personal data. Uh, I think this is the debate, but for sure uh, it's going to happen. Even if the governments don't really uh, preserve or pay respect to this. Is going to happen uh, because uh, it's clear that the analogic world is falling apart, and and many uh, businesses are trying to resist with using lobbies, etc. Are going are going to die uh, because uh, it's very inefficient uh, by all means. So it's going to happen. So you're going to get into the now. We see that with the QRs, the QRs uh, 10 years ago was kind of a science fiction, like now nobody, or also when, when you pay through WeChat or when you pay through any kind of messenger or, you know, you pay, a, a, you know, the taxis, Uber, etc. cetera. Um, five years, six years ago, many people were telling now that that's, that's impossible. The taxi driver isn't going to accept this kind of money. They prefer cash. They're not going to accept this. And now it's massive, massively accepted and also required. So for sure, biometrics are going to be key to, to, for money laundering, for, uh, to avoid fraud, etc. But of course, uh, we also expect from the governments some kind of rules and respect for, for privacy and also for um, when we talk about private companies. No? We, we, we've seen that in, in, in the... In the very beginning of this wave, uh, many uh, well-known companies from all over the world are not really paying respect, are also, um, you know, interfering in, into the uh, elections, etc. So hopefully, the problem is because we are really down uh, at this, and I think uh, it's important uh, regulation, not really restricting innovation, but also preserving the, the personal rights, human rights. Okay, thank you. So Shitra Stern uh, just joined. Uh, uh, she's a, a little bit late because she was taking the, the first uh, vaccine. And uh, in Portugal, uh, we are a little bit behind con comparing to, to the United States. So Shitra uh, is a founder and owner of Martinal Family Hotel and Resorts, born in Singapore, lived in London, married with a Swiss guy, choose Portugal, and she's our neighbor in Cascais. So, uh, <clears throat> um, thank you, Bernardo. I'm actually fully vaccinated. I, I got the Johnson uh, Johnson and Johnson. So, 
I count for one more, uh, leading to the 70% uh, in Portugal, which is, I, I'm yeah, really happy <laughs> to be joining. I apologize for, for being late, but, you know, vaccination first. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> So Chitra owns a large group that, uh, that has hotels, real estate, now schools, and uh, she's a role model to, to many inspired governments, women business, changes communities, and uh, especially in the south of Portugal, a huge change due to Chitra uh, entrepreneurial side. So Chitra, a simple question. Um, will uh, family... Will family tourism and uh, the business model you've been following um, in, in the past will be uh, a part of the future of tourism? And uh, how will adapts and tourism in general will adapt to this pandemic? And when do you believe we will have a full recovery in tourism? Uh, well, uh, Bernardo, first of all, thank you for your huge accolades. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I deserve all those words, but thank you. I'll take it. Um, um, I think our focus has been uh, family, uh, families at the luxury end. Uh, I always say we're parent-friendly hotels, so we still give the luxury for the family to be together and have family reunions. Um, and I think um, given this huge um, 15 months of reflection we've had, um, the post-COVID world, I think, um, that's my opinion, uh, will see much more um, family uh, travel, um, savoring moments together, precious moments together. Um, they will look for safe destinations, and Portugal is one of them. Uh, you know, we're seeing travel within Europe returning uh, first. Obviously, we've seen the, the, the UK... Um, um, you know, green list issue, but I'm happy to report, um, Bernardo, that, you know, we're getting uh, French bookings, Swiss bookings, German bookings. Um, so, you know, uh, the, uh, especially where people have been uh, not, you know, not been able to travel, they're, they're really taking this moment. And I think uh, this sort of, um, they're looking for uh, villa holidays, uh, holidays in spacious grounds. And as you know, Bernardo, all our resorts are, um, you know, very, uh, they have a lot of fresh air, open air around. And, you know, in, in Sagres, for example, you can even uh, get into your hotel room. We have a small uh, hotel, but lots of villas um, without having to, you know, uh, go into sort of, it's all, all entrances are from the open air. So, I think that we're seeing this, uh, and I, uh, and I think um, uh, you know, leisure travel uh, will be uh, even more popular in general, not just family, because I think people have understood that we should not take this for granted, and uh, you know, uh, should, should make the most of like carpe diem, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, even Americans uh, I know are waiting to come; they want to see Europe again. And, um, you know, we're, we're having lots of requests and we're waiting for the, the corridors open again. And I can't wait uh, to see that magic number for Portugal uh, hit 70% uh, this summer. Uh, and I urge everyone who uh, uh, should be vaccinated, get out there. It's a smooth process. Uh, it's wonderful to see Portugal uh, just, you know, being organized. And um, e even in the uh, toughest week of May half term, we did all the uh, COVID uh, antigen, rapid antigen. We organized it through the labs at our hotels or the local GP clinics. And it was so, you know, uh, uh, I would say comparatively seamless to what I'm seeing uh, in, in, on Sky News, you know, the testing back in the UK. So, um, you know, residential tourism is another area. People living here, um, you know, it's not much talked about, uh, but it is a key a factor which we will see increasing in Portugal, people moving here to live here and spend money here for more than part of the year. So we've got all the, the basics here. I'm sorry I missed the rest of the debate. I'm not sure where, <laughs> uh, whether I'm contributing anything uh, by saying these things, but uh, uh, if it has been said before, I'm reiterating it. 
Uh, my husband and I have been living in Portugal for 20 years and it's a great country. So come live. <laughs> <laughs> thank Beautiful. you Shifre, for your for your comments um thank I, you I, I am i am totally biased as you may know uh, i'm from Cascais. now i am uh, I, I i have the function of le uh, leading the, 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 the tourism in Cascais, and i always say Cascais is the best place to live one day or a lifetime uh, one day if you are choosing tourist a lifetime if you choose Cascais. Uh, Cascais to live. And um, yeah, we are all about uh, integration. 20% of our population uh, in Cascais are expats and we call them neighbors. That's why I called Chitra a neighbor. And, uh, Thank you. And, and we, we love our beloved expats. They have so much to contribute to our community and they are a part and members of, of our community. Yeah, for, for sure, Chitra. Uh, I, totally, I totally agree with you and uh, the, the rest of the guys um, and and the lady, of course. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we okay, were, I can be called a guy too. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but I, I believe one of the words that is common it's um, the safetyness. Um, and uh, what what will? And this is a question to to whoever wants to, to talk about it. Uh, Safeness is, is, is the words everyone is, is talking about to, to, to feel safe, to, 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 to give the trust to the other and, 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 uh, and business models have been growing in IT, growed a lot because of this safeness and we talk about it in this panel. Will this continue to be like this and the search uh, for safeness and uh, avoiding personal contact or will we go back to where we were including the technology and the evolution of technology that we will not go back in my opinion but what in terms of personal contact and uh, transactions and whatever what will be the future uh, in this area i don't know who wants to to start please um, i have a I can, couple just really quick on. oh go ahead um please. yeah it really it's it's just um i think we have to remember that we're all in industries where hospitality is the foundation. We've all hired people because they're great at hospitality. They want to talk to people. They want to be with people. When you travel, you want to interact with cultures. And so I really think that technology is going to help, um, help like enhance that and, and magnify the hospitality component. I think we are going to be making contact. We are going to be in the same place. We're going to love it. And, and I mean, I think we'll be more cautious, but I think it's going to make hospitality better. So you can focus on, you helping a guest rather than verifying their driver's license or their passport. Uh, I would agree, um, uh, Bernardo. I think uh, it will help. But, you know, we've just been 15 months without contact. And, um, uh, you know, this is one of the things we're doing at the Education Hub is uh, the peer-to-peer -peer contact for education is important still. And we've realized that uh, uh, also in tourism, um, you can do certain things. Technology is helping improve our lives, no doubt, in all industries, education as well as tourism, but uh, and you know event management. But part of it has to be the human contact and business being done. Uh, you can do much of it over Zoom uh, or other platforms, but the the final meeting, the handshake, the few things you exchange when you're face to face and not over a computer. Uh, are still important. Um, so I think for the future of travel and any kind of tourism, especially leisure, <laughs> you know, it will be uh, helping, but, you know, it's not going to take away the, the family reunions, key milestones or the holidays where you hug and kiss your children or each other. Yeah. I totally, totally agree with, with uh, Chitra, but I think for the global shopping, for the shopping itself, I think it's going to be really cool also uh, to generate a good density within cities, you know, and, and many people is going to be uh, probably uh, enjoying Cascais and at the same time thinking, okay, I don't think I'm going to really spend uh, a lot of time at, this, at the center of, of Lisbon, for instance, uh, just uh, probably I'm going to have meetings with people, with friends, with, with uh, etc. But, but I want to really buy uh, 20 or 25 items. So I'm going to use my mobile phone to really uh, buy, virtually speaking, not really, I don't really need to enter into the, the retailers 
and then I'm going to get my VAT back. I'm going to uh, get my money back through uh, three clicks. So, and I think that that's going to generate a better density within cities because always you're going to have the option to get into the store, but uh, not uh, massively the whole uh, tourism getting into stores because that's uh, causing uh, a bad density and also uh, it's going to spread potential pandemics. Sushil, yeah. um, you were about to say something because Antonio connected directly to your business model. <laughs> so I was going to say 